in too many instances, uh, we've gotten rid of the most important American trait, and that's self-determination, and replaced it with victimization. Uh, we've gotten rid of conversation and replaced it with cancellation. Uh, here with me today is one of my best friends ever. Uh, this is a great man. And when I say that he is a true friend, we talk about things between us that we don't talk about with anybody else. Uh, it just the two of us have closed door conversations that, boy, would you like to be a fly on the wall? Uh, and maybe today we'll talk about some of those things, not all, but some of those things. This is a friend that knows the true meaning of those words that we've been talking about. And from identifying his purpose at a very young age, carving out his life's philosophy of you have to dream big and believe that you will succeed to taking a leap of faith into comedy, Steve Harvey has become one of the most recognizable names and faces, not just in America, but in the entire world. He's an Emmy award-winning uh, entertainer, radio personality, motivational speaker, New York Times bestselling author, businessman, philanthropist, and an esteemed member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity, um, uh, and the first international fraternal organization founded on the campus of a historically black college. Now, these are the Steve Harvey facts. And together, we're diving into creating success in your life, your community, your state, and really importantly, our country. So I want to welcome back to my podcast live today, live, Steve, that's a warning, live. <laughs> yeah. I want to welcome back my great friend, Steve Harvey. Yeah. Steve, Woo! Yeah. here we go. Smoking. That was great. Who was that guy? I don't know. I was listening to that intro. I was going, I want to go see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you though? Yeah, man. How you been? I've been well. How about yourself? Man, I'm I'm my life is shining, man. It's but just shining. Do you do you seriously, do you ever sit back and take a a a, a pause and look at where your life is now and reflect back on where it's come from and think how in the world did I get here? Man, <laughs> I, 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 I can't count the times I've done it. It's just, uh, it's amazing to me. I really, I, man, my life is filled with so much favor. And it, but it's been filled with so much hardship and so many tribulations and trials, man. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see how I was going to get here. And then when I look around, when I take a moment, like you say, to pause and look at where I am, I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed by it all. You know, I, I got some steps to my, to my front door at my house. And when I pull up at night and I pull my car in front of them steps, it's 33 steps up to my front door. It's 11 steps, then it's a platform, 11 more platform landing, and then 11 more, and there's a door. And I call them the, my thank you Jesus steps. Because when I'm going up them steps, man, I thank him the whole time I'm walking up the steps. Now, keep in mind now, this is the end of the night. I'm beat. I done done a full radio show that day. I done done a full day of family feud and you're on your feet all day and I'm walking up them steps. And, it's, and I call them the thank you Jesus steps. And I say it every time because the house I live in I actually, I actually profess that house. I got halfway up those steps and turned around and looked back at the fountain and I said, man, one day, one day, I'm gonna get a fountain like that in front. Cause I was visiting a buddy of mine at that house. Really? Yeah. And I and and I stopped and I turned around. He said, man, stop acting crazy. Come on. I said, man, you gotta be kidding me, man. And that's the house I live in today. But you used to visit that house. I used to visit that house. I saw the house when it was being built. I was, I was a part of it. And I saw that house when it was being built. 
And I told my wife, I said, one day, and she told me, she said, Steve, not this house. It, it, we can't do this. We're going to downsize when the kids move. Well, I ain't never believed in downsizing. I don't no. know what downsizing is for because I don't know how you get God to give you more and then you give it back. I ain't never been into that. Like, I don't do cutbacks. That just ain't <laughs> my thing. I, I had a guy on my show, uh, uh, Clark Howard, and this ain't nothing negative, but just— He's just on the show. He just kept telling everybody how to cut back. You know, cut your cable off to save money instead of driving your car to work, carpool. And I sat there for about a month. And I listened to that, and I just couldn't take it no more because he, I, I, I'm not in the cutback business. I'm in, I'm in the. If God bless me, I like to keep the blessing. So I, I, I don't really cut back. And my wife told me we was gonna downsize. And that was the first major argument we ever had because I'm not in the downsizing business. Yeah, that doesn't seem like your personality. I don't see why, Philly. I really don't see yeah. why. I would. What's the crummiest place you've ever lived? I mean, you, you think back to the, can you think of the crummiest place you've ever lived? Yeah, my car. Yeah. What yeah. kind of car was it? A Tempo. A Tempo? A Ford Tempo. A Ford Tempo? Yeah. I don't suppose it was new. Oh, no. New. That would have been nice. Now, I lived in that, and I lived in a Bonneville. I had two cars. I lived in both of them. That was the worst place. I, when I think back at the poorest place I've lived is a house I grew up in, but at the time, I didn't know that. It was par for the course. It was one of the houses on the block. Everybody lived like that, so I thought it was, I thought this is how you live. You 13 people in one bathroom. I, you know, I thought that was it, but... but because you didn't know any different at the time. No. Because I was the same way. I grew up poor, but at, at the time, if, if you've never ridden in anything but a 58 Volkswagen, <laughs> if you've never been in a Cadillac, you don't know the difference, <laughs> right? You don't know you got a bad deal. You just think this is the way it is. Hey, we went to church in a 1968 Bel Air station wagon. And that was my first car in 75. My daddy gave me a 1968 Bel Air station wagon. That was yeah. my first car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the car I went to church in. So, hey, you were born in West Virginia. Yeah, and uh, it, it was uh, it, that was not a a, a a real affluent time in your life. But there were seven of y'all, right? Yeah. How, how many kids them. were in your family? It was five kids. Five kids, seven. Mom and daddy was yeah, seven. There were yeah. seven in the family. Yeah. Did everybody uh, work and contribute when you were growing up? Yeah, that that was a must. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Wasn't no free rides in my daddy's house. He didn't, yeah. you know, like, you know, when you, like, we didn't have allowance and stuff like that. We had to work. We had to, I've had a, I've had paper routes and, and, and pop bottle hustles ever since I was 10. So. You know, I, I've wondered many times if that's the reason you and I got along so well so fast, because I, we've talked about this before and I threw paper routes Mm -hmm. I picked up pop bottles, and you know, mm -hmm. you'd get a nickel for some, and you'd get a dime for others, yeah. and put them together. And uh, we've had some of those same experiences. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I would not want my kids to go through that. But I don't mind that I did. I, I mean, it's okay with me that I, I went through that at the time. I wouldn't want to do it again. <laughs> yeah. But um, and I wouldn't want my kids to do it. But I, I I don't I, I don't regret it. No, I mean you know look man it it made us who we were. I mean you know you you look at everything you've gone through. I used to oftentimes question God all the time, man. Why is my life like this? You know, as I got older. When I was a kid, it wasn't a question. This was what it was. But when I got older and homeless and all like that, I used to ask God, what is this about, man? I mean, look, come on, enough is enough. But everything you're going through. It's preparing you for what's to come. You and I needed the pop bottle moments, the paper routes. You and I needed that so we could become who we are. Now, we grew up, and we don't want our children to have that, so we work doubly hard so they don't have to go through the same things that we went through. And then that's, that's a challenge I find for a lot of people who are doing better now because you give so much to your kids that they miss some of them valuable lessons that you had to learn along the way. And then you start thinking to yourself, well, did I give them too much? What's the cutoff point? And, you know, I wrestle with that all the time with my kids because my kids didn't, didn't fight on the way. My kids went to school with a jacket 
that had a patch on it, you know, with the blue shirt and uniforms and yeah. they got demerits. Yeah. And they went to detention. You know, when it was over with for me, school was over with for me, my detention and demerit was somebody had a demerit waiting on me in the playground. Yeah. Cause when the bell rang, I'm kicking, you know, some tail and yours is it today. Yeah. Well, my kids didn't have to go through that because yeah. they had a room with a bathroom in it. They own bathroom. Yeah, their own bathroom. Yeah. 